So the only reason I think I begin and end here where my skin meets the air is because I have a group of cells that has a holographic image of me inside there. Wipe that out. I don't have that perception of myself anymore. Welcome back, folks, to the Mind Valley podcast. And today is going to be an absolutely fascinating day because we are here with Jill Volte Taylor. Now, if you haven't heard of Jill Volte Taylor, I'm sure you've heard of Oprah's Super Soul Sunday, or I'm sure you've heard of TED Talk. Now, this woman is a woman who, in 2008, Time Magazine put on the list of the top 100 most influential human beings on the planet. Imagine that for a moment being on Time Magazine's list as the top 100 most influential human beings on the planet. And how uh, Jill's incredible rise to fame started is because of her famous TED Talk about her stroke. The talk came out in 2008. It was called My Stroke of Insight. And this talk immediately gained 26 million views on the TED platform. It blew up. It became one of the most incredible TED Talks in history. And in, and in fact, many people say that it was this talk that actually launched TED as a global platform. So go check it out on TED.com. It's called My Stroke of Insight. And shortly thereafter, Oprah invited Jill onto Super Soul Sunday. Jill was the first guest on Super Soul Sunday. Within three months of that sequence of events, Jill made Time Magazine as one of the top 100 most influential people on the planet. Now, Jill has written two books, uh, My Stroke of Insight, which came out in 2008, and then whole brain living, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm so excited about the ideas in whole brain living. I got on a call with Jill several months ago just to understand um, the topic that we were going to present. And this is really exciting. So many of us misunderstand the concept of the left and right brain hemisphere. And you've heard those myths, logic, emotion, or logic and creativity. Turns out that's wrong. There are four characters in your brain two for the left brain, two for the right brain. Jill is going to explain. And in this podcast episode, you're going to learn about these four characters. You're going to learn how to understand them, give them names, understand when you may be pulled in a particular direction by one of them, and then how to bring all four of these aspects of your brain together in what is called a brain huddle. So without further ado, let's bring up Jill Falte taylor Jill, welcome to the Mind Valley Podcast. I'm so excited to be with you. I've been looking forward to this for months. So thank you very much. Jill, first, where in the world are you right now? Right now, I'm in Bloomington, Indiana. I live in Indiana half the year, and I live on a boat in Kentucky the other half of the year. You live in Indiana half of the year and then a boat in Kentucky. What do you do on a boat in Kentucky? Everything. It's a completely functional riverboat, but I tie it up and I live out with God. And my friends are the family of heron and the eagles and the turtles and the muskrats. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, I really get to live in nature and I get to work. Two years ago, I wrote the book last in the cove. Last year, I, I podcasted the boat from the cove. Uh, and this year, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the integration of how whole brain living is influencing the world from the boat. Not yet. I'm eager. <laughs> Jill, I, I love I, I love the lifestyle you've built for yourself. Before we we get to the four characters of the brain, uh, which is a, a a powerful idea from your new book, Whole Brain Living, which those of you listening can find on on Amazon. I'm just curious. After that stroke that you had, the stroke that was the subject of your TED talk, when your left brain shut down, and you started going into these these altered states and experiencing life in a completely different way. Did any of that influence who you are today and your lifestyle choices today? Absolutely. It, it uh, you know, I shifted from being more left brain dominant where I was, I was thinking linearly. I was methodical. I was climbing the Harvard ladder. I was doing research about how does our brain create our perception of reality. And then when that shut down and I shifted away from the linear external world, uh, what I gained was this experience of oneness 
and recognizing myself as we are this magnificent energy ball that is focused on this this collection of 50 trillion beautiful cells and the but our ability to define ourselves as individual I lost that the ability to think linearly I lost that I lost language I lost my past I lost my future I lost my identity as an individual and what I gained was this awareness that we are this magnificent life. We are, and it's a miracle. And to, to live in that existence for eight years before I felt like my left brain had completely recovered and I felt like I was a solid again, not an energy ball fluid out in the universe. Uh, well, you know, you, you don't walk away from that experience and go back to being what you used to be. Instead, I gained this perception of we are one, we are connected. And then we have this magnificent group of cells in our left brain that defines details so that we can be functional human beings in the external world. So absolutely, I have changed my values have changed. My intention has changed. My positioning of myself as a living person in relationship to my fellow humanity has completely changed. Could you, could you give us an example of that? What value changed and how? So that's the first question. Second question is how are you now positioning yourself differently in line with larger humanity? Um, so I'm no longer motivated by things that are invitations for me to climb a ladder anymore. I don't care about the ladder. Okay, well, how many people can say that? Um, right. I am motivated to do things not based on the money I will receive or the status that me, Jill Bolte Taylor, the, in, the individual will gain, but what invitations can I receive that allow me to share with the bigger picture of humanity, the magnificence and beauty of what we are in order to elevate our level of peaceful consciousness inside of who we are. So I'm motivated by the we, I'm not so much motivated by me, the individual. Having said that, I have to have me, the individual, in order to be able to perform work and be in the external world at all. So for me, it's really all about how do I create balance? How do we do whole brain living, but really come into the world through the values of the right brain, which is the collective whole, and then use the power of what I am as a living being and me, the individual, in order to influence the world in a positive way. That, that, that's, that's so intriguing. The fact that you lost interest in climbing the ladder, but instead developed this, this heart about influencing the world, connecting with people. And I guess it also reflects in where you're living right now, out in nature. Uh, I'm a very peaceful, quiet person, but this is always in action. Um, so, you know, I have to find my peace. We all have to figure out what is the environment, take responsibility, not just for the energy I bring into the world, but for the energy I allow to, into my world to influence what's going on inside of my own brain so that I can stay very focused. I say I'm an inch wide and a mile deep on what I care about. And so if, if, if a conversation or, or an invitation doesn't fit inside of that inch, then it, do, it, it just doesn't make its way onto my schedule. But if it has anything to do with whole brain living, boom, you know, I'm in and I bring my entire network into that conversation. Jill, as I'm listening to you speak, I'm, I'm wondering, you experienced this through a stroke right, and, and which you spoke about so eloquently in that remarkable TED talk. Do people experience this in a similar way with plant medicine? Because what you're describing, I can think of moments like that when, when I, I listened to your TED talk again, just before this, and it's, it, it really moves me. I've listened to that talk multiple times. I wanna encourage all of you on this podcast right now to find Jill on TED and listen to that talk. It's 18 minutes, but it'll blow your mind. To this day, people still say it is the greatest TED Talk in history. But when I listen to that TED Talk, some of the things you were describing, like not being able to recognize the pattern of letters, not like your brain racing off, even as you were trying to dial a phone, someone speaking to you and you hearing whoop, 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 rather right. than human language. I've experienced that in plant medicine, ayahuasca, um, um, namely ayahuasca or um, 
DMT, uh, when I've worked with shamans or healers, is there any connection? Well, you know, when you think about any, every ability we have is because we have brain cells performing that function. So when I lost my left hemisphere and 70% of the fibers crossing between the two hemispheres is inhibitory, all of those inhibitory fibers of my left brain were released. Those brain cells ended up in a pool of blood. They became non-functional and they released the inhibition of my right brain experience, which is this awareness that we are, we are this energy ball in relationship to this magnificent collection of organic life. And we are as big as the universe. And I have over the last decade since that TED talk had hundreds of people write to me and say, your, your, your TED talk describes my trip with psilocybin Ex, you know, right. identically. And I, I have to giggle and say, well, um, that makes sense to me because it's all about the circuitry. And you went and you stimulated your circuitry for over the course of, of, of an afternoon. I just spent eight years in that experience. So I wouldn't compare it exactly, but it's the circuitry. It's playing on the same circuitry. Um, uh, many people are using um, plant medicines in order to have the awareness, gain the experience of, of being at one with all that is, knowing that we are so much more than what the details of that left brain have defined us to be. At the same time, it's important to note that uh, plants can, this kind of, of uh, self-medication or journey that you go on is trauma at the level of the brain. And we know that it's traumatic to the brain because the brain's traumatic response is neurogenesis, the creation of some new neurons, as well as neuroplasticity. So when you do have that kind of a, of a, of a trip, you're really shutting down certain characters in your left brain opening yourself up to the experience of what's going on in that right brain uninhibited. And then as you come back down, hopefully you bring that awareness that you have gained into now how you look at your life and you live differently. So instead of having um, a stroke in order to get there, people are finding other tools to find that. But then I'm hoping that it lands and it becomes integrated and uh, there's a, a, a lasting impact. That's beautiful. And for that, let's now talk about your new book, Whole Brain Living, which you have right behind you. Would you mind holding that up in front of the camera, Jill? Thank you. Whole Brain Whole Living. Whole Brain Living. Amazing. So I've started reading the book, guys. Uh, strongly want to recommend it. You can get it on Amazon. Jill, do you have a website that people can get the book from as well? DrJillTaylor.com. Actually, I send, I send just about everybody to Amazon, especially since it's starting to come out in new languages. Amazing. Right. So let, go check it out on Amazon, but on drjilltaylor.com, you will uh, see a lot more of additional information on Jill, including articles, videos, and audios. Okay. So back to whole brain living. Let's talk about the four, character, the four characters of the brain. So when we think about the brain, um, and of course have a beautiful little model for you, um, the, the, the old way that we had been taught is the right brain is emotional, the left brain is thinking. And that's simply not true. Both hemispheres have emotional tissue and both hemispheres have thinking tissue. So what's the difference is going to be that the right hemisphere is right here, right now, in this present moment. There is no past and there is no future. So when I lost the cells in my left hemisphere, all I had was the right here, right now experience of the present moment. I have the amygdala and the hippocampus and the anterior cingulate gyrus, which is emotional limbic tissue, as well as thinking tissue on top. And then, and, and so this is going to be emotion or experience of the present moment and thinking connected to all that is in the present moment. The left hemisphere has a group of cells in here that define the boundaries of where I begin and where I end. So the only reason I think I begin and end here where my skin meets the air is because I have a group of cells that has a holographic image of me inside there. Wipe that out. I don't have that perception of myself anymore. So the left hemisphere also has the amygdala and the hippocampus, the anterior and cingulate gyrus, and 
then so that's the emotion of my past and my future as it relates to me, the individual. And then I have a thinking, rational thinking that is about me, the individual, as I relate to the external world. So I, Jill Bolte-Taylor, exist in my left hemisphere. When I lost the left hemisphere, she died that day, but I didn't die. And my consciousness still existed, but in the present moment, right here, right now. So as you look at what's anatomically happening for, for skill sets, each of those four groups of cells, the two emotional and the two thinking groups of cells result in very specific skill sets. And so I break those down as the four characters in our brain, which we all have because we all have the underlying anatomy. Want me to keep Amazing. going? I love how you just presented that. So let's talk about those four characters. So I name them as though this is how the brain would be in my head. And so I divide it out this way and I go character one is left thinking tissue. So the left thinking tissue is the portion of our brain that is our rational brain. It's our A type personality. It defines me as an individual. It has language. It defines what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. It likes to do, it likes to control people, places and things in the external world. And it's a wonderful part of who we are. And we all know that some of us have much more of this character one personality than others. And that's because that they're spending more time running that circuitry of their brain. So my guess is you have a pretty strong character one, or you wouldn't be running the kinds of machine that you are because there are a lot of details to keep track of. And I actually encourage people to name their characters. So I call my character one, Helen. It's short for hell on wheels. She gets it done. She's very busy. And um, she picks the phone up kind of like, hello, what can I do for you? Not let's be chatty, right? So I encourage people to name their character one. Have you named your character one? I'm thinking, so after reading your book and identifying the characteristics of character one, left thinking, um, and watching that Super Bowl commercial with Arnold Schwarzenegger um, recently, I'm thinking about naming my character one Zeus. Yes. Zeus is a great one. He's the boss, man. Right. Right, right wrong, boss, good, bad. Boss, right? And I don't like it. Boom. You get the bolt. Exactly. You get the bolt. <laughs> you get the bolt. Character number two is going to be the left emotion. And again, this is about me, the individual, because my ego, I am defined by these cells. Without those cells, I simply don't have an identity anymore. So my past, my future, the emotion of my past. So all of our pain from the past, all of our all of the trauma we experienced as children, that's all inside of this group of cells. And deep inside of here is called the insular cortex. And that's where craving happens. So if we have any form of addiction to alcohol or drugs or sex or technology or whatever that craving is, that's also in that character to the emotion of our past and our fear of the future. So this is a part of ourselves that can uh, blame others for our pain or come out angry. It's also a part of the alarm, alarm, alert, alert, uh, sympathetic nervous system. I don't feel safe. And so I'm going to act out by uh, fight, uh, flight, or freeze. So character two, I call Abby because, which is short for abandonment, because I believe the moment I was born, well, before I was born, I was in this magnificent, fluid, symbiotic relationship with my mother's heartbeat. I'd been in there for six, for nine months. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful environment. And then bam, you know, within a few minutes, I'm out in lights that were chaos, sound that were chaos, people poking and prodded. So for me, it, it, it kind of goes to the root of, abandonment, that, that pain of being isolated and now an individual separate from all that I was before. So pain from the past, you got a name for your little pain of the so, past. So here's a question for you. Now, I'm guessing that none of these characters are good or bad, right? They right. all serve a purpose. Absolutely. Character two, character two, the way you described it, 
sounds like a tinfoil hat type personality, sounds like a, a conspiracy theorist or a paranoid schizophrenic. <laughs> Am I interpret interpreting it right? Or well, is there I, I, it's character all the yeah, character two is where we house all of our really, really deep emotions. This is my sadness. This is my joy. This is my happiness. This is my my Thank jealousy. You. This is my my trauma. This is my just at the root of all those pains is pain, emotional pain. And the thing about emotional pain and this group of cells, you are absolutely right. Thank you for making that point. All four of these characters are beautiful parts of who we are because this group of cells is the group of cells that takes information from the present moment through our sensory systems, processes it in to our fight or flight system, which is going to be both character two and character three in those amygdala. Am I safe right here, right now? But character two is willing to take that dog that I see right there and, rub, and jump out of the present moment reality into my past experience to determine to remember I was bit by a dog like that when I was five and so now that kind of a dog I want to push away so character two in all of its in all of its ways that it manifests as output of behavior it's all designed to save ourselves and to protect ourselves from any threat that we have ever experienced in the past and so what that really says is that any of the pain that we experience experience in the present moment that has something to do with our past, it brings it back up so that we can reflect upon it. We can mm -hmm. think about it. We can relate to it. We can find peace with it. We can move through it. We can heal it and come back into the present moment then as healthier people. So it's a critical portion of our brain so that we can reflect and grow. At the same time, when it's when it's exercising its, um, uh, its alarm, it's generally not the most pleasant part of our being. So you know who character two reminds me of? I'm sure you've seen Back to the Future, right? Yes. It reminds me of Christopher Lloyd's character, Doc. So I'm gonna call character two Doc. I going love back it. Into the past, going back yes. into the past, like really protective, like slightly paranoid, but in a good way. He wants to keep everyone safe. Exactly. Um, yeah, That's, exactly right. that. That's exactly and right. That's exactly right. And he's brilliant yeah. and he's bringing in billions of bits of data. And, you know, one of the beautiful things about this little character, too, inside of us is it has been willing to step out of the bliss of the present moment. Right. What a sacrifice. I mean, it has sacrificed its own peaceful heart in order for us to be able to have alarm, alarm, alert, alert from my past experience. So because of that group of cells, we become a bridge across time. Our consciousness isn't just right here, right now. We do have a past and we can project our minds into a future. Character two, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. I love um, that. Now, if, you're, if you're listening, if you're listening, guys, Let's give, I want you to give your character one and your character two a name right now. So it is uh, left brain thinking and left brain emotion. So my left brain thinking is Zeus. My left brain emotion is Doc Brown. Jill, just so we have a summary, could you quickly summarize left brain thinking and left brain emotion again? Yes. So left brain thinking is organized structure. It defines what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. It's the boss inside of our head. It's not emotional. It's rational. A plus three, A plus B, A plus B. A plus B does equal C. Two plus two does equal four. There's no emotion attached to those ideas. But then the emotion of our past and our fears of the future come in with character two. So character one left thinking, character two left emotion. And as you think about how the brain, the human brain developed over time, is that we share that character two tissue, the emotion, limbic tissue with other mammals. So the distinguishing tissue but that makes a human a human Human is the addition of this thinking tissue on top of it. And with that comes skill sets like language and rational thinking, as well as fine dexterity, which really separates human from other mammals. Ah, I like it. So I'm seeing suggestions here for the name. So in the chat, I want you guys to put down name suggestions of characters, characters from fiction, characters from books or movie or TV that we recognized for 
names for character one, and I'm seeing data from Star Trek. That sounds so right. Now, let's also talk about character two. I'm seeing Cleopatra. So Jill, let's go on to characters three and four. Character three and four then are going to be, character three will be the emotional circuitry of the right hemisphere. And the right hemisphere, again, right here, right now, and then character four will be the thinking of the present moment. So right here, right now is an experiential moment. So what am I feeling? I'm feeling the temperature of the air. How much humidity is there in the air? I'm feeling the, the, my clothing against my skin. I'm feeling the glasses on my nose, the experience of the present moment right here, right now. And I get very excited because right here, right now is a perfect moment. Without the judgment of right, wrong, good, bad, or how do I take me, the individual, and fit me into a box of things? thinking of that left brain, I'm right here right now, I'm good. This is when I'm relaxed, I'm simply experiencing. And the right brain is the consciousness of the collective whole, the we in the present moment. So I'm here and I wanna be with others. It's community based, but it might not just be with other people. So for example, when I live on the boat, I'm very connected. People say, Jill, you're so isolated. And it's like, how can I be isolated? I live with the owls and, and I, they're my friends and, and I know them. I know their patterns and the heron and the turtle and I'm connected to everything. So I'm not isolated at all. I may be isolated from people and the left brain thinking, but I'm not, but I'm, I am, I'm connected to. So the experience of the present moment, and it's this character three that is an impetus toward where character two, which is the pain of the past might be a push away from character three three rushes in and it wants more and it's an adrenaline junkie and it wants you to be an adrenaline junkie too. So it goes on great adventures and it's curious and it's interested because it's not functioning in the box of what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. So it's right here right now and it's adventurous and playful and innovative and creative because again, it doesn't have to fit in the definitions that the left hemisphere has made. So so that's the, the emotional emotional part. And then the thinking part is connected to the awe that I exist at all. I am not simply, and if I were, it would be fine, but I am not simply a microbe that is a semi-permeable membrane separating the consciousness of the cosmos from a consciousness inside of a cell with a membrane that allows me to detect and filter in and to have an, a stimulation out. I'm 50 trillion beautiful molecular geniuses filtering in sound and light and all of these waves lengths and all of this energy. And I have legs that allow me to move in the world. And I have hands that allow me to reach out and manipulate the space around me. And it is that awe of, oh my gosh, I exist at all. And my consciousness is as big as the universe, not just funneled in by that filter of me, the individual. So the right thinking, the right emotion, character three, is the emotional experience of the present moment, while character four is the thinking of gratitude. Oh my gosh, I'm alive. And just like that, I can be gone. Amazing. I love that. And character three, Jill, is uh, right thinking. Right. right emotion. Character three right emotion. is right, right, right emotion. Yes. And four is right thinking. thinking. So I'm seeing for right emotion, Winnie the Pooh, Leonardo da Vinci, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. I used to love that cartoon. Dalai Lama for character three. And for character four, which is, uh, which is right thinking, Jesus, Gaia, the Greek god of the planet. Donna Eden for character three. I like that. Troy, Deanna Troy, Dr. Deanna Troy from Star Trek. Is that character three or character four? Character she three. Was pretty, she was four. I was she was, was four. yeah, she was very connected. I love yeah, that you got all these Trekkies. Awesome, guys. So, so the reason I'm asking you to suggest these names is because it helps us understand, remember, and distinguish. Now, the final one, Dr. Sri Kumar Rao for character three, pure awareness. Amazing. Uh, Jill, people are asking, 
if you could quickly recap character three and character four again, so we understand a little bit more about the nuance before we give ours a name. So the basic difference between character three and character four is character four is, uh, is consider when, we're, when we are conceived. Mom's DNA comes together with dad's DNA. We end up as that first zygote cell inside of the womb. And that DNA has the capacity, the power to metamorphosize that single cell over the course of nine months into the, an infant body. And as that happens, it is happening at a rate of some 250,000 new cells per second per second, not per minute, 250,000 cells per second. So the energy consciousness around that single cell that holds that space as those cells multiply and divide, multiply and divide, differentiate into, I'm going to be a, a muscle cell. I'm going to be a, a vision cell. I'm going to be a whatever cell. As it differentiates, the consciousness that is directing that is the consciousness of the character four. And it is that energy that is the cosmic energy. It's the consciousness that is being beyond not just in every cell of our body, but it is the sea within which our body gets to swim. So consciousness, which is of course an, in, uh, uh, an invisible thing, is everywhere. The consciousness exists. And that is the, that it, as a human, it is my capacity through that character four to say, oh my gosh, I am alive. First of all, the awareness that I am alive and the gratitude, it's a feeling of gratitude. It's the feeling of awe. And it's like, boom, I could be gone at all. And it's like the character four consciousness remains, but my character one, two, three characters built on top of that consciousness of the character four will disappear with my death. Character three is take that energy of the consciousness and give it a little boop impetus of energy toward. It's like, oh, I'm alive. So when I had my, my stroke and I wiped out the consciousness of character one and two, it was the character three. I became the consciousness of character four, which is why that TED talk was resonated with everyone's soul because we know that part of who we are and I became as big as the universe. But then the question was, so what do I do? Now that I'm here, I'm still alive. I can exist like this for decades as a vegetable or do I try? to recover? Do I even try? And it is that energetic, yes, I am willing to try and the movement and the energy toward an action, which is character three. So character three is the movement of try in the world. Go, move, be alive, be alive here and, and have that action. So it is the experience. I feel, I feel the temperature of the air. I feel the pressure and the tent and the clothing. I feel the glasses. I feel I'm experiencing the present moment experience. I love that. Thank you for that, clar that clarity. So um, I'm going to give you guys some time to think of your names for character three and character four. Rumi for character three, Shiv Shambhu for character four. And if you guys have your names, we'll now go to the next part, which is the four characters and the huddle. Jill, tell us about the huddle. So, you know, I think most of us can relate to, yeah, I've got that personality inside of me. Um, and we also recognize the conflict that comes with having these different voices inside of our head, essentially. You know, I really want to go to that party and play and be out. Oh, but I got that exam tomorrow. So, mm, or I got that deadline tomorrow. So character one is calling to the deadline and saying, let's get it done. Actually, character one probably got that, that project done a long time ago, if your character one is really strong. Wrong. But if you have a lot of character three in you, it's like, well, I just want to be, I want to play, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to be creative, I want to go to the art space. Uh, character four is pulling me into the woods, and it's like out on the, the full moon night, I feel that energy, I feel the, the calling of the energy that is within me that is everywhere. So we experience these little conflicts inside of our head, and it's kind of like, well, which of these characters are you giving a microphone to? So let's say, um, let's say my, my spouse is coming home and, um, and he doesn't call and I have dinner on the table because I'm a character one. And it was like, 
it's ready at six. I was expecting you home at six, but his telephone got busted and, and it, he drained his energy and he got caught in traffic. And so he couldn't call. And now he's freaking out going, well, I'm going to walk in the door. Is she going to be really sweet to me or I'm and glad I'm okay? Or is she going to like, like chew on me because mm, no, she's mad at me now. And we're constantly bouncing the microphone between these characters. And so I, I have people do what we call a brain huddle. And once you know your four characters, and I encourage you to really get to know the four characters, because each of the characters that holds our body differently, we have a different voice, our faces, we have different facial expressions. Uh, and and we, these are, they take over who we are. These are four characters we each exhibit. And not ju just enough, though, to know these characters, but once you do, you can start recognizing them in other people and then have a better idea about how to interact in that relationship with the other person. But the brain huddle allows you to, in this moment, let's say I'm a character one right now, I'm having a conversation with you. So I call the brain huddle and it's like four, are you on? And character four comes in in my consciousness and says, yeah, I'm here. I'm good. You know, I'm happy. Just keep going. And character two is I say character two, Abby, how are you? And Abby's going, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm good. Everything's good. And character three is going, yeah, well, you know, as soon as we do this, we're out of here um, because, you know, they're all there, but they, I can bring them into the present moment. Now, why do I even care about a brain huddle? I care about a brain huddle because when we move into our pain, when we move into our anger or our hostility or into our fear, it really helps to know as powerful as that circuitry is that I have these other three parts of my my brain that I can consciously step into in order to observe my anger or my fear or my anxiety, which takes the energy out of that brain circuitry and pulls it into other parts of my brain, allowing me to pass through my raging emotions, whatever they are. So the tool that we can use to save ourselves emotionally is this beautiful brain huddle, but you can't just use it when you're hot hostile or angry or in your fear because you're hostile or angry or in your fear. You need to practice and train these other characters and create a healthy relationship between them so that they work together instead of against one another during a time of need. Beautiful. That is such a powerful tool. Now, of course, I, I understand some of you listening here may want more nuance on the four characters. Well, that's why I strongly recommend the book, Whole Brain Living. So go to Amazon, get the book. You're going to really understand the, the granularity, the nuance of each of these characters. Jill, Jill goes really, really deep into these four characters. But as you can see, when you understand these four characters, you have a new way of approaching many of the challenges, the problems, situations in your life. So it's a really powerful practice that I want to encourage you guys to, uh, to take a look at. And of course, you know, given... Jill's way of teaching, uh, the fact that her TED Talk was so successful, her appearances on Oprah was so successful, you know that this book is going to be a really, really, really fun and exciting read. So before you forget, make sure you go to Amazon and check out Whole Brain Living and add it to your shopping cart. Thank you so much, Jill. You are so welcome. Thank you, dear. I really appreciate your time, your energy, and this beautiful audience that's giving all this wonderful feedback. Thank you.